The dyno roars inside Red Bull Powertrain's facility in Milton Keynes, England. For the first time in nearly two decades, a Ford badge gleams on a Formula One power unit, spinning at 15,000 revolutions per minute. Mark Rushbrook, Ford's head of motorsport, watches readouts from sensors measuring thousands of data points per second. The engine is on target, he tells reporters, but there's some nervousness about what happens when this technology hits the Barcelona test track in January. The stakes here extend far beyond the finish line. Ford has committed half a billion dollars to a singular provocative belief. The rest of the automotive world is chasing a ghost. The timing reveals everything. Ford announced their Red Bull partnership in February 2023, nearly 20 years after they last competed in Formula One. During that time, they could have returned at any moment. They watched Mercedes dominate the hybrid era from 2014 to 2020. They saw Honda struggle for years before finally delivering championship winning engines. They had countless opportunities, but they stayed away. Then Formula One announces the 2026 regulations, and Ford sees its opening. Instead of a traditional massive budget engine program, they formed a strategic technical alliance with Red Bull. They're pouring their expertise into a new breed of power unit, one that splits output evenly between gasoline and electricity, aiming to master the hybrid future without the old school price tag. This move is a calculated play by Ford to expose a truth the rest of the automotive world is still trying to ignore. Ford is stepping into a technical minefield. The 2026 Formula One rules represent the most extreme hybrid experiment in racing history. For decades, these cars relied on the raw scream of a gasoline engine, but now that's changing. The gas engine's output is being slashed from 750 horsepower down to 540. To fill that massive void, the electric system is being supercharged, tripling its power to 470 horsepower. This creates a true 50-50 split between gasoline and electricity. It turns the car into a high-speed balancing act. The brakes will harvest energy with enough force to melt standard road car parts in seconds. Meanwhile, the driver becomes a tactical pilot, constantly deciding how to spend their limited battery bank, using a surge of electricity to overtake or saving it to keep the battery from overheating. It's a 1,000 horsepower chess match, and it's all powered by 100% sustainable fuel made from captured carbon and waste. Instead of simplifying the sport, these rules demand a level of engineering brilliance that makes a standard road car look primitive. Ford saw the sheer difficulty of the 2026 era and realized it was the perfect proving ground for their future. Here's why that matters. While Ford announced their Formula One return, their electric vehicle division was hemorrhaging money. The Model E division lost $5.1 billion in 2024, worse than the $4.7 billion lost in 2023. Ford projects $5.5 billion in losses for 2025. In quarter 4 2024 alone, Ford lost approximately $36,000 on every electric vehicle sold. The F-150 Lightning sits unsold on dealer lots. The Mustang Mach-E can't move volume fast enough to justify factory investments. Ford sold around 100,000 electric vehicles globally in 2024, while their combustion division sold 2.86 million vehicles. CEO Jim Farley admitted in February 2025 that large electric vehicles have unresolvable issues. The batteries are too big, aerodynamics are worse, weight requires larger batteries to compensate, and towing capacity drains range to unusable levels. Ford cancelled a three-row electric SUV in 2024, eating $1.9 billion in losses because they couldn't make it profitable within 12 months of launch. That's a company desperately searching for alternatives that satisfy regulations without alienating customers. Formula One becomes that path, not because racing technology transfers directly to road cars, but because Formula One's own contradictions validate Ford's strategy. If electric powertrains were genuinely superior for performance applications, Formula One would have followed Formula E into full battery power. The technology exists. Formula E launched in 2014, specifically to showcase that electric racing works. The current Gen 3 Formula E cars produce 470 horsepower from purely electric powertrains, reach 200 miles per hour, and deliver wheel-to-wheel -wheel competition on tight street circuits. Formula E proves you can build compelling motorsport without combustion engines. Formula One looked at that option and said no. They kept the gasoline engine specifically because removing it would fundamentally alter what Formula One represents. The sound that makes stadiums vibrate. The strategic complexity of fuel loads and engine modes and the engineering challenge of extracting maximum efficiency from controlled explosions. These elements define Formula One in ways electric motors simply cannot replicate, regardless of how technologically advanced they become. To see the limits of pure electric racing, look at Monaco. In 2019, Lewis Hamilton flew around this track in one minute and 10 seconds. 
Six years later, the fastest all-electric Formula E cars are still trailing that mark by 16 seconds per lap. On a track just two miles long, that's an eternity. What's wild is that these electric cars actually beat F1 off the line, hitting 60 miles per hour in under two seconds. But in the real world of racing, sustained top speeds, brutal braking, and high-speed cornering, pure batteries simply can't bridge the gap yet. If batteries were the total solution, Formula One would be using them. Instead, F1 is betting on a hybrid future, keeping the roar of the combustion engine alive while supercharging the electrical side to get the best of both worlds. Ford picked their partner with surgical precision, not Ferrari or Mercedes, whose hybrid dominance proved battery management works. Ford chose Red Bull, the team most openly critical of the 2026 regulations. Helmut Marko warned the 2026 cars might be slower than Formula 2 machinery. Former Red Bull team principal and CEO Christian Horner questioned whether massive batteries might compromise performance. Red Bull represents skepticism toward over-electrification, exactly the philosophical alignment Ford needs. The partnership solves problems for both organizations. Red Bull faced losing Honda as their engine supplier after 2025, exactly when new regulations demanded hundreds of millions in development costs. Ford needed access to Red Bull's institutional knowledge of actually operating competitive hybrid power units, skipping the painful learning curve that destroyed Honda's reputation from 2015 to 2020 when they partnered with McLaren. Red Bull Powertrains already manages and supports the Honda-built engines that have propelled Max Verstappen to four consecutive world titles. Ford buys that expertise instead of spending years developing it independently, then stamps their badge on power units designed for regulations that align perfectly with their vision of automotive technology's actual future. The pressure inside Milton Keynes is reaching a breaking point. Red Bull's new team principal, Laurent Makies, described this month as the peak stress moment for the project. The 2026 engines are screaming on the dynamometers, with only weeks remaining before winter testing begins in Barcelona. Despite his personal GT team recently striking a deal with Mercedes, Max Verstappen's F1 future remains tied to this engine. The ultimate verdict on Ford's half-billion-dollar gamble rests with him. Only when Max gets behind the wheel will we know if this new power unit delivers the surgical precision he demands, or if the 50-50 hybrid split has introduced compromises that even a four-time champion can't overcome. The sustainable fuel component reveals Ford's longer game. The 2026 regulations mandate fully synthetic, carbon-neutral gasoline engineered from sources like carbon capture, municipal waste, and non-food biomass. Shell, ExxonMobil, and other suppliers are developing drop-in replacements for petroleum that allow combustion engines to operate with dramatically reduced carbon footprints without requiring the massive infrastructure investments that electric charging demands. If these fuels work in Formula One, where engines consume fuel at rates no road car ever will, they can absolutely work in the F-150s and Mustangs that define Ford's business. This gives Ford ammunition when environmental groups criticize them for not going full electric, when European regulators push stricter mandates, when competitors claim Ford lags on electrification. Ford points to Formula One and says hybrid technology plus sustainable fuels delivers environmental benefits without forcing consumers to abandon the driving experience they prefer. Watch how this narrative is already shifting policy. By late 2024, cracks appeared in Europe's electrification consensus. Germany questioned whether banning combustion engines made sense when synthetic fuels could achieve similar reductions. The United Kingdom pushed their combustion ban deadline from 2030 to 2035. The European Union now debates whether multiple decarbonisation paths make more sense than mandating batteries. Ford's Formula One programme moves beyond the theoretical debate, serving as living proof of what this technology can achieve. When policymakers ask whether alternatives to full electrification exist, Ford showcases hybrid technology working at the absolute limit of performance demands. When critics claim combustion engines have no future, Ford demonstrates sustainable fuels powering the pinnacle of motorsport. When competitors insist full electric is inevitable, Ford points to Formula One's deliberate choice to stay hybrid as validation that performance enthusiasts reject batteries as the sole solution. The political timing is immaculate. By 2024, electric vehicle mandates became flashpoint issues in the United States, with conservatives criticizing forced electrification as government overreach while progressives defended emissions, regulations as climate necessity. Ford, historically adept at navigating political environments, positions their Formula One program as compromise. They claim environmental commitment through hybrid technology while avoiding full electric stances that alienate core customers. It's automotive diplomacy, using racing to validate technology that satisfies multiple constituencies without fully committing to either extreme. What Ford is not doing speaks equally loud. 
They're not developing a Formula E team. They're not investing in electric racing series or battery-focused championships. They're specifically choosing Formula One's hybrid regulations over any fully electric alternative, sending an unmistakable signal about where they believe enthusiast vehicle technology should evolve. This decision carries more weight than any press release or sustainability report. Ford is telling the automotive world that hybrid technology, not pure electric, represents the realistic future for performance applications. The first Barcelona test session begins January 26, 2026, and every manufacturer arrives under a cloud of uncertainty. Mercedes brings proven hybrid expertise, but faces a rulebook that devalues their long-standing engine mastery. Ferrari adapts its endurance racing dominance to the F1 stage, while Audi finally debuts as a high-stakes rookie. Honda returns to lead Aston Martin, and Cadillac enters as the sport's first 11th team in a decade, led by veterans Sergio Perez and Valtteri Bottas. Then there's Ford. Absent since 2004, they are betting that starting with a clean sheet of paper is better than trying to bridge two decades of lost development. In just a few weeks, we find out if that gamble pays off. That first engine note echoing through Barcelona will answer technical questions about power delivery, reliability, and drivability. But it settles something larger. It reveals whether Ford correctly read the moment when the automotive industry splits between companies fully committed to electrification and those pursuing hybrid alternatives. If the Ford Red Bull power units prove competitive, it validates Ford's entire strategy. It demonstrates that combining combustion efficiency with electrical augmentation works when performance actually matters. It gives Ford justification for pivoting away from pure electric vehicles despite spending over $50 billion on electrification since 2021. If EVs were genuinely the inevitable future of all performance vehicles, Ford wouldn't be here. They'd be in Formula E, proving batteries win at the highest levels. Instead, they're in Formula One, investing in hybrid technology that keeps combustion alive while adding electrical enhancement. That choice reveals that even in 2025, even after years of electrification hype and billions in investment, a major automaker still believes gasoline engines have a future when paired intelligently with electric motors. Formula One's 2026 regulations represent a departure from the push for full electrification. They serve as a clear acknowledgement that pure EVs still can't match the performance, sound, and raw character that defines this sport. Ford recognized this shift and immediately placed their bet. The engine roaring in Milton Keynes today is a prophecy of the hybrid future, not just an echo of the past. If you believe Ford's return to F1 proves that hybrids, not batteries, are the real future of performance, or if you think they're dead wrong, drop a comment, smash that like button, and subscribe, because this hybrid gamble is about to play out at 200 miles per hour and we're covering every lap.